Okay, Fred, I guess we can start. Fred, are you online? Can you hear me? Um, yes, no, yes. Cool. Um, so, sure the uh, the meet. Frederick, uh, I think uh, your line uh, is not clear. So. Yeah. Do you want to try from uh, some other uh, phone? Yeah, Fred, do you want me to take over for the time being? Because you're bro breaking a lot. Okay, let me uh, let me try to to take this over and uh, and see. Okay, so uh, please, uh, I don't know if you have heard already, Fred. So this is a, a recorded meeting. So just uh, everyone be aware of this. Uh, I have posted the link to the minutes, so uh, we would like that everyone that attends the meeting enters their name uh, in the attendees uh, and uh, said that and we are already like seven minutes in the meeting let's quickly start and um, uh, go through the uh, through the agenda so uh, first of all uh, does anyone have anything uh, specific that 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 wants to be brought up in the to discussion uh, today uh, I see that in the current agenda we just have uh, enumeration of the upcoming events uh, and um, some of the recurring uh, calls that we have. Um, anything else that uh, that you want to discuss? Yeah, sorry, my um, my audio wasn't working. Uh, so I rejoined. Is it working now? Yes, it's perfect. Excellent. So I'm. I heard you were saying something, but I caught it only the the very tail end of it. Yeah, I I was just trying to continue the meeting, but now that you're on, you can, you can. Uh, I was just saying that that uh, we need to bring up some some more topics into the agenda if someone has something to add because it's currently only events that we have. And, oh. uh, Okay, so is anyone able to share the agenda onto the uh, onto the screen? I can do it. Okay, that'd be great. Right. Uh, so we have the agenda here, and then I just need to share my screen, and it should be this one. Is it seen? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Great. So let's go ahead and get started. So, um, so agenda agenda bashing. Going back on that, um, is is there any topic that anyone would like to discuss? So considering that today is a bit uh, a bit light, today is the best day for you to bring up ideas or, or new concepts. Okay, we have so we so a couple uh, a couple of recurring talks that we have. Uh, we now have the NSM documentation call, which happens on every Wednesday from eight to nine Pacific time, and it's actually part of the reason why the um, the discussions in this meeting have dropped down a little bit. It's because a lot of <laughs> the discussions have been punted to there, and so. Uh, we also have a, another call, which I believe is on, was it Fridays now, is the is the Network Service Mesh use case call? Uh, I, I saw one on- That's correct, correct. On it's on the use case on Friday. Cool, so what, what time on Friday is it on, so that people can be aware of it? Uh, so Friday, eight to nine Pacific. Cool. And who's uh, so Jeffrey's running the documentation one? Who's who's heading up the uh, the use case one? So this would be me and Prem. Uh, it's sort of 
with the key joint owners cool yeah i saw the initial documentation that you guys start, uh, put together so let's make sure there's a uh, make sure there's a link on uh use case to this document and uh that way the people can can find it easily and in fact i think uh, next week we'll have some uh, key findings we can probably um we'll definitely um, need at least uh, half an hour or even more perhaps the entire call could be like you know uh next steps on what we discussed there in the use case and the workflows an uh, excellent question from uh, gunner which is uh, is this you is this call using the same info as this call um, I, for the documentation, uh, the answer is yes. And I believe it's the same for, uh, uh, actually I'll let you answer that. Is, is, is the place where you have the meeting, the same location as here? Yes, I think uh, this is the same, uh, with respect to the, uh, call, it would be the same bridge. Uh, yep. So, so, uh, I'll probably send out, uh, calendar invite to all, um, which would essentially contain the bridge details as well as the time. All right, fantastic. Yep. Um, uh, one request, Fred. Um, so we got, I don't think both me and Prem, we have permissions to add the, um, a, I mean, make any modifications to the calendar on the use case, if you could please, I'll be appreciated. Uh, uh, in I have the access, from the, Yeah, Pram. Oh, you have the access. Okay. Yeah, sure. So we have to ask Pram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. No, I thought Pram. There's two things, right? You said uh, the so one the thing. What calendar. Have, yeah, calendar invite, and then on the uh, on the home page or the web page, we need to just add a, a widget uh, that would essentially show the use case uh, call. That would essentially okay. Be a, okay. Update, yeah. But the widget, you have access for both widget. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Great. And another set of meetings that I highly recommend people get involved with, or rather a set of projects, is they have the, uh, the new CNF uh, test bed and the new CNF uh, 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 CI that's, that's going on. So the test bed is uh, every first and third Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So the first meeting was, um, uh, was yesterday. Uh, I apologize for not being able to to join in to the Volk people who are very heavily involved. Um, and so one of the things that uh, that is being discussed is the difference between like VNF versus uh, versus CNFs. And they have uh, they're they're producing actual data that uh, shows the performance of uh, of VNFs and CNFs in you know, OpenStack environment versus Kubernetes. Uh, things like uh, met, uh, use, using things like MemIF and use, trying to do like an apples to apples comparison between uh, between the both of them, and also trying to do like apples to oranges comparison as well for um, for uh, differences like optimizations we can make in the uh, cloud native space that is not reasonable to make in the uh, in the VM space. So that I highly, highly recommend people get involved with that. Uh, it was still early days on that. So if you have some, if you have some goal that you would love to see in that space, I'm sure they would love to to hear your use cases. Uh, do we have anyone from Volk uh, or from that the CNF test bed who wants to say anything more on that? They might be at the CNCF. Uh, they have a, uh, a talk that has a conflict every other week. Yeah. So they're coming out today. So we'll catch them next week and ask them to tell us more about it. Yeah, and it would help you if we had a link here to so something, site or minutes or something that, that can give us more information. But okay, next week. Yeah, cool. So we have um, service mesh day coming up. I've put in a talk for that. So we'll see what happens with it. We have ONS coming up, of which we have at least three talks submitted and, uh, and accepted. Um, we are also 
Uh, we also have the opportunity to show something at the LFN demo to showcase ODL and network service mesh integration. So Prem, you and I need to have a conversation on that. Uh, yes, I think uh, probably sometime today or tomorrow we can have. Yeah, sure. I, I have one interesting question here because we tend to change some APIs here and there. Uh, are you pinned to a specific version or are you still, you know, under development? What are your Maddie, plans for this? Not, we, so we haven't pinned yet. Uh, once, so we, we're going to begin the, uh, it's a very simple use case on this one. So we're going to take uh, existing use cases that we have like ICMP responders and so on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to extend them out to, uh, to something that can talk with Neutron. And we're going to, in the Neutron side, instead of hooking it up to a VM, we're going to hook it up to a VXLAN tunnel and then respond with those parameters back to network service mesh using the using the eight standard APIs. So mm -hmm. with that, it's, it's it should be a, a trivial integration on our part. But I, I do I do get a little bit concerned about it being a moving target at this point. So once we have a working version, then what we will do is we will create a uh, we will create a branch for the purpose of the demo, and then we will we will initiate uh, the actual demo off that branch in order to prevent. Um, any conflicts coming up from changes. So, um, so if you have any upcoming changes right now that you think are important for us to know of, like definitely keep us in a loop. Uh, but don't 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 worry about making changes. So like continue to make changes. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. Uh, so we 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 have uh, uh, some discussions around changing the. Uh, service uh, descriptor, no service descriptor, the NSM uh, registration, like uh, factor it out in a separate uh, um, RPC and th things like that. But I mean, I guess that these things would be interesting for you because you are essentially implementing an external NSM, right? In a, in a way. Yeah, for the most part, it um, the registration will matter, uh, but for the most part, it won't matter too much because this is gonna be an external service. And so the pod will not have to know how to connect to it, but or rather the, the network service mesh that communicates with the pod will have to know how to find it. Uh, and so that'll help exercise that path to a degree, mm -hmm. but ultimately it should be a very simple, it should be a very simple solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So in fact, if we, if we, if we don't make it an ENSM, if it's just like a standard NSM that talks Neutron, then uh, that that may even simplify that path even more. Yeah, um, yeah even 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 a, a static entry uh, could be, you know, uh, in the CRD could be could be a thing. I mean, you don't need a dynamic, I guess. But okay, fine. Cool. So let's see. We have. MPLS, SDM, uh, NFV, service provider um, discussion and talk that's coming up in April 9th through 12th in Paris. We have Container World 2019 in Santa Clara with Prem giving a talk. Oh. We have KubeCon EU coming up. So we, the notifications were supposed to come up on the mar on March the, March the 5th, but they've been pushed back a week. Yeah. So uh, don't expect the schedule uh, to be out until uh, after March 11th, on or after. And um, this is the list of the talk that we posted. Okay. Yeah. So we also have uh, KubeCon in China. I am not sure if anyone put a talk in for that. I'm not aware of any. Uh, if anyone has submitted a talk, please add it. We have um, ONS Europe that is coming up. The call for paper on that closes in June. And finally, we have MEF 2019. Um, Jeffrey, do you want to say anything about MEF 2019? Because uh, I, I don't know what your... Uh, what, what sure. you talk about. <clears throat> Our talk was submitted. Um, I'm not sure when the official announcement's coming out, but I will look to get on a call with a, a few of us later this week just to talk about the pox with our um, TPMs. I gave them kind of like the rundown actually yesterday morning on NSM and what the plumbing is and what 
we'd want to do to incorporate it into our demo. And um, they're chewing on some stuff and working through some legal things. And then I will see about getting, you know, them on a call with like you and Nikolai, et cetera, and Prim talk about like what the partnership might look like. Cool. So, um, so in a nutshell, we may have something in MEF 2019. Uh, more, more to come as we learn. And finally, KubeCon 2019 call for papers open up in uh, May and end in July. Uh, and in July. End in July. Um, okay. So a quick recap. Uh, I, I do have a couple things to uh, to talk about. So I was at the Mobile World Congress. I ended up having a conversation with a few uh, with a few companies that I'm going to pursue um, to see if I can get them get them involved. So uh, I'll I'll fill you in more. I'll fill, I'll fill the community in more as people start to to fill in. Um, I also uh, Fred, I have a quick question. Uh, would sure. would would uh, would these guys be more um, like vendors? Uh, I mean, uh, any type like uh, hardware, software, whatever vendors, or would they be more on the client side? Because you know. Okay, so there's a mixture. So there's there's a couple that I'm I have follow on calls that I'm that I'm going to try to organize with, and so some of them are uh, are vendors that would be able to provide, let's say, and like a network, network service endpoint. Um, I spoke, uh, I, I spoke to, uh, to two, two companies that are providing SDNs that could also provide additional data planes. Oh. Um, I actually see, I actually see data planes as being high value because right now the only, a lot of, one of the misconceptions that the uh, community has about network service mesh is that it's a VPT thing. Because right now the most mature and really the only real uh, data plane that we have at this point is uh, is VPP. So the APIs are designed to be generic, and so what we need is uh, so, is someone to come along and implement, ideally from their from their uh, from another data plane. So I have a couple conversations with. Uh, um, one is an OVS based, um, actually not OVS, it's, um, uh, it is an open flow, but non OVS based uh, SDN. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask them to see if they are willing to join in or not. Um, so we'll, so we'll see how, we'll see how all that goes. Um, when it, in terms of, of, um, in, in terms of data planes as well, um, I also that also reminds me I have to follow up with Tungsten Fabric because I had some early conversations with them to see if they'd be willing to uh, to join in and uh, and get hooked up to the data plane side. So, um, so I, can I um, just call some stuff out real quick? Then I, I sure. think tomorrow, then in when we get back into the glossary, um, and I will say like I'm gonna push any use case discussion out of the documentation call and leave those for Fridays. And then I'm sure that there will be terms that come out of those Friday calls that then we can bring into the Wednesday calls. But um, getting to like the data plane, um, I still feel like that is one of the biggest points of confusion as far as terminology goes and as far as like, like what the consensus is. Um, and I'd kind of like to understand better because um, I feel in my mind, just being one of the sneaky network people, the data plane sounds more like a control plane. Um, but from NSM's perspective, it is the data plane. And then when we start talking about like integrating with like vSphere or, you know, KVM OpenStack or whatever, even PNFs, right? Um, at that point, is there really any data plane integration or is it NSM making requests to Nova and Neutron's APIs and it's handling all the data plane stuff for me, right? So, I mean, I think we really need some clear definitions before we, you know, start setting all these independent developers loose on these projects, or we're going to end up with some, you know, unharmonious hodgepodge of different data plane implementations. Yeah, that, that, that's an excellent point. And so part of how we tried to control some of that is to saying what the integration points are in the, in the API itself. So that uh, that helps a little bit because then ind independent vendors and so on can come in and work out like this based upon the API. This is how we integrate in. 
but the terminology is important because are you speaking to a data plane or are you speaking to a control plane that can communicate with, with other data planes? And what I usually, when I discuss with these type of people, the way that I often describe it is uh, NSM acts as a controller for control planes, which, because uh, eventually something has to actually ship your packets around, which is your data plane. But, but I I'll usually try to describe it as like a control plane of control planes. So, but uh, I think we can come up with something better. So I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to see what comes out of the uh, Wednesday documentation meetings as we try to like really refine or even invent a new term for, for this. Yeah, because, and I don't see Ed on the list anymore of attendees. I don't know if he dropped off, but I'm, you know, he, I feel like he's got a completely different opinion. So we need to get some kind of consensus, you know, break a couple glass bottles, throw people in the middle of the bar and let them fight it to the death till we figure out what we're going to call a, a data plane, a control plane, and maybe whatever this third term is, because um, it, it's going to end up causing us heartache, I think, in the future if um, that stuff's not clearly defined. Yeah, de definitely. So we'll, we'll have some good, uh, we'll definitely have some good conversation. So Ed was not able to show up today. He had, uh, he had something that uh, prevented him from, from joining today. So I'm this, is, this is actually a very um, um, interesting point. So further deeper, as you're seeing in the use case, uh, as we deep dive into the workflows, you're also seeing in the context of multiple inter network interfaces, right? So how do you actually name them, right? We have right now NSE naming convention, but essentially there are multiple network interfaces and, uh, you know, there is prescriptive connectivity. You can't just do random connections. They're all pre-specified. So how you define and name those interfaces across those network functions and you know before you connect them right yeah i'm i'm not even sure all of them will have names like uh, no no um so this is like a broader topic fred so this came about like sort of how do you onboard right so basically the thing is we're doing all this cool stuff but then as you're bringing uh you know network functions and you would like to onboard them seamlessly right so we need to have some method for doing it, right? Simplify onboarding. Otherwise, then you have to basically, uh, you know, <laughs> restart the whole process, right? Correct. I, I I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think with uh, with the use cases, uh, well, when we sit down on on Fridays, we'll you know any type of questions that come up or any anything that is uh, in terms of the workflows or so on. You know, let's let's make sure we we focus and, and get those uh, get those well defined. Sure. And in so. fact, one thought was maybe originally to run that as part of this call, but then we said let's do this deep dive. But maybe I think I think as we progress, we probably need to bring back more quickly. I think like because that's a critical topic. We're, as we walk through the use cases, we realize that it's also a workflow impact right right away as we put these together. Oh, absolutely. And, can... and there's there's two things that I would recommend on that. So uh, the first one is the people who attend the documents and the, and the use case. Uh, my recommendation would be to continue to sync up here as well. And part of what we could do, uh, this is all up in the air. So it's it depends on what's best for the community. So if something works, we'll do it. If something doesn't work, we'll find something else. So if uh, if it makes sense, we have the meeting on Wednesday and we have the meeting on Friday. Uh, I'm going to try to attend both of them and other people may try to attend both, but it may make sense to resync um, perhaps here or so on in order to, in order to discuss high level findings that, that impact one or the other. Um, but I, I, I do want to be a bit careful as well with, uh, with prescribing and saying, this is how you must do it. So if you, if you find, if you find that there's a technique that works better, like, don't uh, don't avoid it because I didn't say to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's correct, Fred. Fred I mean, uh, that was the, our notion was to sync up, uh, uh, you know, very frequently, especially the uh, use case and workflows. Cool. Yeah, and I so, think Frederick, even outside of like preferred use cases and stuff, right? We still even have to go like another level higher because I think. If you look at, like, say, the Kubernetes versus the OpenStack um, approach to NSM, I think that some people would just say that OpenStack itself 
is the data plane because if we're coming in from purely just the developer standpoint, not the sneaky networkers, sneaky networking guy standpoint, then like I'm just going to call OpenStack. It's going to do stuff for me, and my packets will have some type of forwarding element underneath them. The problem is, is the sneaky network people's heads are going to explode when you call Nova and Neutron a you know data plane. So. Um, finding out like even before we even get as granular as this is the best way to like name something or implement something just like coming to some kind of consensus or just agreeing that we can't come to a consensus because networking people okay. and app people are always at each other's throats and then coming up with two different definitions i don't know but um, this, i this thought a, um, it would that be more of uh, sort of the ensm because as you very well know uh, i mean regarding network services much more than open stack right there are a physical network functions today and there are orchestrators it's a given so yeah, think, i'm thinking of more that's more of the saying. ensm look at, look at, and well look at odl for instance right and then look at a pnf that has no other management like we're just going to put like um an nsm manager agent on like some general purpose compute on like a cisco or juniper box right i mean in one instance, you're going to like program that box directly via its APIs by putting your, you know, declaration in NSM. The other one, you're going to like call ODL and then have ODL act on those PNFs for you, right? I've heard some people describe it as, in both instances, both the PNF on its own and then ODL itself would be, quote unquote, the data plane, because it's from the NSM perspective, what's actuating the forwarding of packets for you, and that that makes me a little queasy, but um, I just, like I said, these are just things that I've been extrapolating from hearing different people's comments, reading the different like um, notes in like the documents and stuff is like, I, I mean, Frederick called it out too, right? I'd say like maybe 60 to 70% of people who have got no real deep exposure to NSM, they just watch the KubeCon videos, think that VPP is the default data plane for NSM at this moment. So I, I think it's, it's very nuanced and it's still kind of wide open and it needs some some refinement yeah and in fact a really good way a really good way to exemplify this problem is you look at kubernetes itself people think that cni itself is the data plane but cni is just a uh an interface it is uh, an activator and uh cni actually is no, is no is no longer running once uh once your data plane is actually hooked up and, sh and shipping your your packets like CNI is already out of the way by that point. So, but if you ask people, what's the, what's, what's the data plane? They'll say, oh, it's CNI or it's something that, uh, that, that, uh, so, so, so we have, I think we're not gonna be able to eliminate that, that issue uh, entirely, but I, I think, I, I do think that you're, that you're correct. And I, my sense is that we're gonna be, we're gonna end up with different uh, types of users. So we have to, we have to look at, being generic enough for one type of user, but, but very precise for another class of users. And so I think for your average developer, like the great majority of users are going to be, um, are going to be clients. They're going to, they're going to annotate their pods. They're going to, they're going to run applications and connect to things. The second um, largest group, I believe, are going to end up besides the operators, of course. Are, is going to be people making the actual endpoints, so fire, you know, building firewalls or um, bump, either bumps in a wire or uh, basically actually building out the services. The third group of people who is going to be the smallest but probably the most technical out of the lot is probably going to be the actual data plane providers. And so I don't expect there to be a large number of data planes out there, um, but. We, I think I think it may be important to be very precise for them, and it would not surprise me if we ended up with it with a uh, data plane set of documentations for people who wanted to add data planes that was that we used very high, very precise language specifically for them. Right, and this so, is the last so, I'll be on this dead horse. It's really sorry, just sorry, like you. you. <laughs> No, no, no. You, you, um, you, you hit the nail on the head, right? And the thing is, is because you described those three different groups, regardless of what the definitions end up being, we just need to make sure that when someone builds yeah, a client these are, these are or an endpoint, you know, and we, we just want to make sure that there's consistency across those three different groups. That way they don't build stuff that doesn't interoperate, right? Like we don't want to recreate 
yesterday's networking problems by there being all these different variations of how people decided to implement stuff because you know the context of what needed to be you know actually built wasn't put out there clearly enough yeah so, that's, so, that's an excellent point yeah fred so uh may i ask a question since you just mentioned about cni so uh there's one thing so basically so how would you define the relationship between NSM uh, and CNI, because basically, so is that basically there are two ways? So is that like say you, you're gonna let CNI? So basically, uh, these two are probably orthogonal to each other. So, 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 so is that the way that you want to make this? The CNI is gonna take charge of the uh, basic connectivity things, uh, and then NSM is gonna handle the more complicated networking, or NSM in the future is gonna take all of them. So that's, that's one thing uh, that I'm confused about. Okay, so as of now, they're completely orthogonal in the sense okay. that uh, we, we actually, uh, we, we make an effort to not interfere with, uh, with CNI, because CNI is your default Kubernetes, uh, your, your default Kubernetes instance or your, your network. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. So we don't want to mess with that because you mess with that, then you're actually, you may break the contract between Kubernetes, the pods and the network. And so, so, we, so, mm -hmm. and so what's going to be the focus of the you know, future of NSM? So it's going to. Okay. So, so this is where it's a little bit up in the air uh, in terms of the focus. Okay. So we don't want to, we, we want to, we still want CNI to be CNI. Like, so we okay. still want to maintain a level of orthogonality. Uh, at the same time, I, I believe that there's places where uh, a CNI plugin and network service mesh be able to work in tandem in, in very specific places where, um, where, they can, where they could potentially cooperate. And so one of the things that I'm looking at is like, what what's, would such a cooperation look like? Like perhaps you could have a CNI plugin that calls uh, something in NSM and provides you with a network service before landing you to, uh, before landing you your connectivity as, as an example. Um, so to the user, they're still just calling CNI, but they're getting something uh, that's managed with all the auto healing and, and oh, update gotcha. chats and so on. So there, are, so there may be interesting use cases like that, uh, that, uh, that may tie in very well, and, and so I'm, I'm, I still haven't explored all the possible use cases yet. And um, but and part of it that we have to be a bit careful with is going to be that C, when CNI runs in Kubernetes, so it's not a problem with CNI, it's a problem with how Kubernetes uses uh, CNI itself. Uh, and so when you start when you start CNI in Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is, it runs a, a container. It's, and the container runs an application called pause. When pause runs, you, the only thing that is created for you at that time is the, is the Linux network namespace. And so you can attach, you, you, can, you can do things like add things into IP tables, create an interface, IP it, and so on. Uh, CNI runs with privileges, so it's capable of, uh, of manipulating the network namespace. And once CNI exits with a positive value, or rather with a successful value, I'll say, and returns the parameters like this is the IP address. And so Kubernetes then receives these, uh, this information, and then it reuses that network namespace, and then and it will then spin up another container that actually has your file system. And so... Um, if you, so if you were to come in and say, I want to add in MIF into, into CNI and I want to have some sort of shared memory story, then but when CNI runs, there's nowhere for you to mount the, uh, the inode in the file system. When it exits, then there's, there, again, you, you may have an inode that you created or, or wanted to mount somewhere, but there's nowhere for you to actually pass that through. And so there's uh, so there's actually a a, a mismatch in, in that side where you're not actually able to configure that type of, of interface. 
And so, so there's some limitations. Like if we were to run as a CNI plugin and we were to drive drop something in there, then very likely we would whatever we drop in has to be a kernel interface. So there are some limitations that we'll have to respect if we if we go in that particular path or that particular story at this time. Uh, so yeah, so so I, I want to be a bit careful with this though because for for the, for the use case that CNI was developed for, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so we, we just, that's why, I, that's why I say that NSM is designed to solve a different set of use cases than CMI, but there is overlap between the two of them. Okay. Thanks so much. Sure. Are there, uh, are there any other questions re in regards to, uh, documentation or the case group? And how they um, interact. So, um, so one request, Fred. I think you described this uh, NSM CNI so well. So maybe, uh, maybe should we actually create some sort of uh, FAQ uh, in the documentation um, on these, uh, uh, you know, interesting questions. So basically, which can which could pop up. Sure, I'd be I'd be happy to repeat this, and um, also the session's recorded. So once it hits YouTube. Uh, we can try to pull some of the video off of that and transcribe uh, and transcribe it as well. Uh, but yeah, I'd be happy to to help with that. Well, thanks. Yeah, because I think I there there was some other context. Somebody asked me this and I responded, but probably not so well. And now I think we're at a point we're trying to sort of take it to the next level, right? So basically, you can say, hey, there's an FAQ. Kindly go through it. If not, you know, we'll chat, right? You know, besides the video. I mean, people are. Some people look at videos, some people are more uh, text oriented, right? So basically we cater to different audiences. Yeah, and something that uh, that I'd like to do as well. So uh, we he's not on the call right now, but I, I think we should enlist the skills of Watson to help us with some of the visuals. So we can we can describe in text what it is. And we'll we'll get Watson to create some of the visuals for uh, for us in terms of like, how does NSM look versus like, what is CNI trying to solve? And no, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the favorite, uh, Malta is also like this favorite question, right, from everybody. <laughs> so such things, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. We, we can, we, we could describe uh, how Multis works as well. And that's one of the things I want to try to be careful with is um, like, I, I, want to be, I want to be very careful to not pitch this as a NSM versus Multis. Because again, uh, NSM and Multis solve two different problems. And so uh, Multis solves the problem of you want to run multiple CNI, um, you want to run multiple CNI plugins in the same pod. How do you do it? And so, and there, there's, very, there's a variety of reasons why you may want to, why you may want to do this, but it's, uh, it's a different problem than what uh, Network Service Mesh is designed to solve. And yes, you could you could use one or the other for certain use cases, or, so there is overlap. But but they really are solving two different uh, two different problems. So that's, no, exactly. That's what I want to be a bit careful with as well. And uh, I also want to be careful with not pitching ourselves as like being against Multis either, because it's not like there's a lot of really great people on the Multis community. And we also risk uh, alienating people in the Multis community if we, if we come across as, uh, as hostile and say what they're doing is wrong or so on. Because it's not, what they're doing is not wrong. Like they're, they're solving a very, a very specific and important problem. So I think, uh, Frederick, uh, that's a good point. Also, another thing is I think down the line it will become inclusive, right, uh, to the solutions, right? Uh, because Multis in a way tries to solve a different problem and we are in a way try to do it as all other than the multiple interfaces use case. Uh, so um, my, I, I have two points about Multis. So I have been to a talk by Dan uh, who described Multis as a kind of short-term solution uh, in terms of not really solving the real problems. Uh, while uh, NSM was, uh, you know, pointed as one of the potential, like longer-term solutions that, that that have the potential to solve at least a little bit more problems. Uh, then uh, the other thing that I would like to add about Motus and in comparison with uh, NSM, 
and especially since this is recorded, uh, is that uh, no, Motos doesn't give you a way to expose services on these new CNI interfaces. So essentially, once you have the interface, you are on, on your own, how you, you connect to other services, how you discover them, et cetera, et cetera. While with NSM, we have a very clear definition that this interface is a point-to-point -point link to an yeah. NSC. And then you, ho you have the whole network service description, uh, how to uh, compose uh, complex network services, et cetera. And this is, I consider, a very big ad advantage over whatever models can offer. Yes, I think that, Nicola, that's a great point. I fully agree with you. And uh, somehow we have to probably uh, get that out uh, loud and clear. Uh, yeah, but also thought, there is um, on the uh, just one thought on the commonality. Uh, maybe perhaps there is a place where actually, if you look at the multi spec, they describe uh, how these multiple interfaces look like. This is more of from a perspective of you know network function onboarding. So maybe perhaps we could actually say this is something which could be common between both because so you have an NSC, then you have different interfaces. How you describe them, just from a perspective of on ease of onboarding, right? Um, you know, um, maybe we could be explicit about it and say there is some commonality, but hey, here are the key differences, right? Uh, bigger picture, service, everything, correct? Uh, I'm afraid this could sound as like, you know, putting us in kind of opposition or kind of contradicting a little bit with them. And I'm, I'm not sure if we should have. <laughs> I, don't know. I know it's a tricky one, Nicolai, and I'm just trying to see uh, because this particular one, uh, I heard that, hey, okay, this part, I mean, an injecting interfaces and multiple ones, after all, it has to be common, right? Why, uh, why do two different things? Um, I know, I think that's sort of where at least I'm trying to see if um, wherever, if there is commonality, uh, can we actually embrace and say, yes, I mean, uh, we are working towards it or, you know, something towards that effect. Yeah, so, so it's one of the things I looked at really early on when we were first creating um, NSM. So like, this is what this is where part of the um, where, where, where part of the issue comes from. So um, we, one of the things that I was hoping early in, a, in NSM's early life was that we'd be able to pull CNI and use the CNI portion to inject interfaces into the uh, into the container. And when when we were developing it out, uh, it turned out to not be a particularly great path for for CNI based upon our use cases that we had. One of the main use use cases being uh, things like the shared memory interfaces, and so uh, it didn't really buy us anything in those uh, in in those areas. And so that's so I wanted to uh, like. It, so we, we ended up adding in the ability to inject an interface out of uh, out of necessity, but the purpose of NSM is not to inject multiple interfaces, even though it's capable of doing so. And while Multis was designed specifically for the purpose of injecting multiple interfaces into a into a pod that follows the CNI lifecycle and CNI path, so that's what I was saying. They solve two related but but different problems. So that's, that's why um, <laughs> uh, I know Fred, but the challenges, like as we get to some real use cases, I do think uh, we need to uh, have an answer for multiple network interfaces from an isolation perspective. I mean, uh, if oh, we, we do one have argument could be. Hmm? Like we, we do support multiple interfaces. So that's, that's not a, that's not an issue. It's it's primarily about about positioning. Like what I what I want to avoid is people putting on slides Multis versus NSM, and, uh, and so that that's that's the main thing that I want to that I want to try to avoid because they're apples. Uh, not um, not versus. I'm saying how they complement. Sort of you know that's the way. I mean when questions come up. Um, yeah, complementary. How they complement. Yeah, exactly. So the basically we answer in the FAQ how they're complementary right away. Right, just basically don't even let people even think about versus, right? Yeah, so versus, like, I'm against. But if it's how to complement, then I'm totally for that. So, Correct, yeah, exactly. And we write it up in the, not just the use case, in the FAQ, and then, hey, uh, uh, 
tackle that problem right away, right? And to your point, I think I like your suggestion on some sort of, uh, you know, animation also towards it and let's do it. Cool. Okay, guys, we have 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Uh, I would like to quickly go through the, the TOC application to just at least mention it because uh, okay. that's important. You have, the, you have the rest of the time. Okay. Uh, so, so this has been something that has been discussed uh, for a while and Ed did uh, his first step. I know that some of the people already reviewed that. I have put the link here in the minute, so any, anyone that, that is not aware of it, please please go check it uh, uh, at your inputs. Uh, we already have some of the TOC members from what I understand. Also, uh, you know, uh, having some feedback on it. Uh, so, um, I believe that this is a huge step and something that we need to, to, to pursue in the next uh, months. Uh, it would be great if we can complete like sandboxing before KubeCon or at least announce it at KubeCon. This would be great. So, um, yeah, um, I don't know if, if we need to go through, uh, through, through, through the exact text, but um, we have a description. Statement of alignment to CNCF. Uh, we need to find sponsors. Um, yeah, we're going for sandbox project. We have our rep repository, which uh, uh, thanks to Fred, uh, initially we moved to from the Ligato to our own space. So thank you. Uh, yeah, we have some sort of infrastructure requirements which are we are covering and we also need to work a little bit more um, for this, like Google Cloud and etc. cetera. Uh, and um, yeah, for the time being, we have this, uh, we only have the IRC on free node. Maybe we can consider Slack <laughs> at some point. As this has been discussed already. We have the weekly mink meetings. I don't know if we need to actually add here um, some kind of you know the use case. Uh, ah, this is the documentation subgroup here. Maybe the sub, the use case meeting can also be added once you generate some minutes and some more information that can be added here. Will be great. Um, yeah, um, I think that one of the remarks that we got was the number of, uh, um, so not only the number of uh, con contributors, but uh, it was uh, some remark regarding the um, uh, the names of the people, if I remember correctly. I think we need, we can go into this, uh, maybe in individually, not, not needed to do this on the call, but um, I don't know if if you have an idea if you if you know something that that you can contribute just just send PR this will you know uh, improve some of these numbers and uh, especially if you are from a company that hasn't already contributed you know widening this um, list somehow is um, will be will be great. So I, I don't know if we need to, to talk anything more than this, but um, yeah, please c consider looking at it. Mm -hmm. So, so, so Nikolai, do, do you think it is necessary to uh, mention a little bit about the uh, release process? For example, the roadmap thing, uh, just to let them know that uh, what was going to be, uh, what's going to future is going to be uh, of an attempt. Do you think it is helpful or necessary? Uh, just, they just pop up. My mind. Uh, yeah, we have uh, the empty uh, space here for yeah. uh, yeah, you're gonna put methodology okay. and mechanics. Uh, so I have today. So I today I have submitted uh, my uh, spec for the um, like moving it uh, as a PR to be integrated under our, our uh, under our doc specs. So uh, once we converge on this, uh, we can we can put at least a link here, maybe a couple of words, uh, cool. also. But yeah, that's cool. that's a good point. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Other co comments on this, or we can conclude.
so um one thought is like we are going to um get some good feedback on the workflows and the use cases will certainly reflect back in the document and maybe uh we can set some time actually to um you know review all those changes and further maybe uh, before ons um and my thought was uh, ons could be a good time frame to sort of uh, um get some support and also starts right with all this material uh, which we have correct because we have several talks and we could actually uh, you know uh, flash them up as part of our presentations uh i'm sorry i didn't get it is this uh, related to the um cncf uh, sandbox oh, no no uh, no no uh, no nikola ah. i was thinking more of first okay, is okay. before cncf we have ons right so that could be a good event to sort of get some good publicity on this um, on especially we want stars right and then sort of people mm -hmm. to be more aware of our work um but sort of we can set some targets around getting this to a next level right with feedback from the use case and the workflows and especially the distributed cloud aspect we are looking at right um and so basically get all those uh, into the document and perhaps uh, even if possible review before ons so that ons we can actually include all this material in our presentations or panels right so hey flash it up here is sort of you know we can um, we have the opportunity to sort of um you know do more marketing there and uh, get more attention yeah especially to ones of course makes sense Oh, oh Nikolai, I think we still got a couple minutes. I just uh, come up with another thought. It's about do you think we can mention some about uh, the uh, I mean challenges or difficulties while uh, implementing or achieving an NSM? So we're not only mentioning about like say the, the values of an NSM, but also something that may be a little bit challenging so that they see that uh, it worth worth effort worth worth we are trying for. Do you think that's going to be a uh, something we're going to uh, try to mention, or uh, for example, some some new some new like say technologies or innovation something we're going to put? Um, yeah, I'm not. I mean, uh, so uh, at least my impression from talking to some of the people which are kind of close or related to the CNCF. Uh, my impression was that, that people are more interested into the community. I mean, kind of, uh, my, my, my understanding is that if there is a community interested and you can demonstrate and show that, then uh, actually this is, this is what's, what's most valuable for, for them, like to sponsor a project and to help them, you know, grow. Because that's, I mean, they're not, I, I'm not. I, I don't know exactly the details. Like I cannot speak for them. But my my impression is that they're more interested into the community, into the value. I mean, if there are more people coming and you know uh, companies, then then actually it, it makes sense for them to sponsor the project. Uh, I'm not saying yeah, that yeah. there's no point in saying that this is a real novelty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but uh, I think that they're evaluating it through the community, through the through the facts of the. Uh, you know, computers and uh, people. Yes. Kind of yes. Yeah, so, so I, I was, I, I was just curious about, like, say, what, what are the major, like, uh, standards or metrics criteria of those CNCF project they focus on? For example, they are they focusing on business success or business potentials, or like, say, technology innovations. Uh, so, so that's what I'm uh, just thinking about. No, so to um, answer that question, this is solving real problems. So that's sort of one of the aspects we are deep diving into use cases, right? So this is not a, just about a single cloud. It's about distributed cloud solving problem for enterprises and telcos. That's the part we are working on and we want to feed back some of the key ideas from there. So it's solving, I mean, the goal of NSM is to solve real business problems, right? That's where we're headed. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, definitely, if you if you have something in mind specific, uh, you you can just just add uh, a review here with ideas, questions, whatever. I mean, we need to collab collaborate on this and find find the proper text that we want to submit. So, 
Okay, I guess that we we are close to uh, the, the end now. Um, Fred, do you have some something as a conclusion, something that you want to to say before we close? Um, I think I'm pretty much good at this point. So um, let's go ahead. So just a reminder: we have same time. Uh, Wednesday and Friday, we have the documentation and use case work groups, respectively. And this meeting uh, will happen again next week at the same time. So thank you, everyone, for, for attending, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you all. Cheers.